Me, Mrs. Diebred, too. Gypsy to kill in a silky scarlet petticoat above my knees. Dirty, pretty knees. See my body through my petticoat, brown as a berry. High heel shoes with one heel missing. Tortoiseshell comb in my bright, black, slinky hair. Nothing else at all but a dab of scent. Lolling, gaudy at the doorway. Tell your fortune in the tea leaves. Scowling at the sunshine. Lighting up my pipe. Me, a lord cut glass, in an old frock coat belong to Eli Jenkins, and a pair of postman's trousers from Bethesda Jumble, running out of doors to empty slops. Oh, mind there, over, and then running in again. Uh, Tick tock. Me, no good boy, oh. Up to no good in the washhouse. Me, Miss Price, in my pretty print house coat, deaf to the clothesline, nutty as a Jenny Wren. Then pit pat back to my egg in its cosy, my crisp toast fingers, my homemade plum and butter pat. Me, Polly Garter, under the washing line, giving the breast in the garden to my bonny new baby. Nothing grows in our garden, only washing. And babies. And where's their fathers live, my love? Over the hills and far away. You're looking up at me now. I know what you are thinking, you poor little milky creature. You are thinking you're no better than you should be, Polly. And that's good enough for me. Oh, isn't life a terrible thing? Thank God. Our frying pan spit. Kettles and cats purr in the kitchen. The town smells of seaweed and breakfast, all the way down from Bayview, where Mrs. Ogmore Pritchard, in smock and turban, big bazoon to engage the dust, picks at her starchless bread and sips lemon rind tea, to Bottom Cottage, where Mr. Waldo, in bowler and bib, gobbles his bubble and squeak and kippers and swigs from the sauce bottle. Mary Ann Sailors... Praises the Lord who made porridge. Mr. Pugh... Remembers ground glass. As he juggles his omelette. Mrs. Pugh. Nags the salt cellar. Willy nilly postman. Downs his last bucket of black brackish tea and rumbles out bandy to the clucking back where the hens twitch and grieve for their tea soaked sops. Mrs. Willy nilly. Full of tea to her double chin brim. Broods and bubbles over her coven of kettles on a hissing hot range. Always ready to steam open the mail. The Reverend Eli Jenkins finds a rhyme and dips his pen in his cocoa. Lord cut glass in his ticking kitchen. The stampers from clock to clock, a bunch of clock keys in one hand, a fish head in the other. Captain Cat in his galley, blind and fine-fingered, savours his sea fry. Mr. and Mrs. Cherry Owen, in their donkey street room that is bedroom, parlour, kitchen and scullery, sit down to last night's supper of onions boiled in their overcoats and broth of spuds and bacon rind and leeks and bones. See that smudge on the wall by the picture of Auntie Blossom? That's where you threw the seco. <laughs> <laughs> you only missed me by inch. I always miss Auntie Blossom, do. Remember last night? In you reeled, my boy, as drunk as a deacon, with a big wet bucket and a fish frail full of stout. And you looked at me and you said, God has come home. <laughs> and then over the bucket you went sprawling and bawling and the floor was all flagons and eels. Was I wounded? And then you took off your trousers and you said, Does anybody want a fight? Oh, you old baboon. Give me a kiss. And then you sang a brust with tender and bass. I always seek a brust with. And then you did a little dance on the table. I did? Drop dead. And then what did I do? Then you cried like a baby and said you were a poor, drunk orphan with nowhere to go but the grave. <laughs> and what did I do next, my dear? Then you danced on the table all over again and you said you were King Solomon Owen. And I was your Mrs. Sheba. And then? And then I got you into bed and you snored all night like a brewery. <laughs> <laughs>
From Bine and Butchers in Coronation Street, the smell of fried liver sidles out with onions on its breath. And listen, in the dark breakfast room behind the shop, Mr. and Mrs. Bynan, waited upon by their treasure, enjoy between bites their every morning hullabaloo, and Mrs. Bynan slips the gristly bits under the tasseled tablecloth to her fat cat. She likes the liver, Ben. She ought to do best. It's her brother's. Oh, do you hear that, Lily? Yes, ma'am. We're eating puskat. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you cat butcher. It was Dr. Mine. Oh, what's that got to do with it? Yesterday we had more. Oh, Lily, Lily. Monday otter, Tuesday shrews. Oh. Go on, Mrs. Bynan. He's the biggest liar in town. Don't you dare say that about Mr. Bynan. Well, everybody knows it, ma'am. Mr. Bynan never tells a lie, do you, Ben? No, Bess. And now I am going out after the corgis with my little cleaver. Oh, Lily! Up the street in the sailor's arms, Sinbad Sailors, grandson of Mary Ann Sailors, draws a pint in the sunlit bar. The ship's clock in the bar says half past eleven. Half past eleven is opening time. The hands of the clock have stayed still at half past eleven for fifty years. It is always opening time in the sailor's arms. Here's to me, Sinbad. <sighs> All over the town, babies and old men are cleaned and put into their broken prams and wheeled onto the sunlit, cockled cobbles or out into the backyards under the dancing underclothes and left. A baby... I want my pipe, and he wants his bottle. Noses are wiped, heads picked, hair combed, paws scrubbed, ears boxed, and the children shrilled off to school. Fishermen grumble to their nets. No good boy who goes out in the dinghy Zanzibar, ships the oars, drifts slowly in the dab-filled bay, and lying on his back in the unbaled water among crab's legs and tangled lines, looks up at the spring sky. I don't know who's up there, and I don't care. He turns his head and looks up at Clarigib Hill and sees among green, lathered trees the white houses of the strewn away farms where farm boys whistle, dogs shout, cows low, but all too far away for him or you to hear. And in the town, the shops squeak open. Mr. Edwards in butterfly collar and straw hat at the doorway of Manchester House measures with his eye the dawdlers by for striped flannel shirts and shrouds and flowery blouses and bellows to himself in the darkness behind his eye. I love Miss Price. 